How would you describe what Cinecon is over the years and today? The film festival that shows the rare, the hardly ever seen, uh, the neglected, and the recently preserved. How did this movie come here, and, and how did you get her to come here? Marsha's an old friend. I don't mean because she's old. She's been a Cinecon friend for over 40 years, and I've interviewed her several times. And what I wanted to do was I wanted to honor her with her favorite film as she prepares to turn 99 years old. Oh, the story of me has not been told except in the documentary that is called, uh, what is it, Mar? Marsha Hunt's Sweet Adversity. Marsha Hunt's Sweet Adversity is the name of the documentary that's been made about me that I think is right about on the brink of general release. However, documentaries are shown. Uh, I don't know, are they mostly at film festivals? Mm -hmm. They're not in theaters, are they? Are they? See, I'm, I'm not well it's enough. Been in, in it's been in several film festivals and one. It won the Burbank International Film Festival, the Studio City International Film Festival, the Ojai Film Festival, oh. and it was shown recently at the American Jewish Festival and this morning at Cinecon. Wow, she knows a lot more than I do, <laughs> but I'm happy to learn it all. And, and it will be in La Jolla in October, on October 17th. Oh, that's La Jolla's my birthday. Film Festival. That's when I turn, what am I going to be, 99? 19. Oh. <laughs> she made 54 films in 17 years, from 35 to 52, and her name appeared in Red Channels, which was a magazine, a right-wing magazine that named purported communists in radio and television. And once her name appeared in that, she lost her, she, her career quietly dried up in radio, television, and eventually film. Her last film before the blacklist was The Happy Time in 1952, and after that she really only did eight more films over the next, the rest of her career. She never was able to really regain her theatrical career. When, when is your birthday? But really, 9-9. Nine, nine. October 17th. October 17th. None Shall Escape, uh, made in 1945, directed by Andre Dutath, was literally the first of about 160 anti-Nazi films made during the war that visualized on screen what would be a central aspect of the war that most people did not know about. In other words, the Holocaust, the murder of six million Jews. This movie, None Shall Escape, what lesson, what lesson did it send to America when this, when this film was released? The subject of anti-Semitism had not been dealt with on film, and this was the first. And I think for those who saw the film, it may have been kind of a shock to learn that it had existed in Europe. And uh, to that extent, I guess it had a significance. None Shall Escape in 1944 is the first and only Hollywood film to show atrocities committed against Polish Jews and the massacre of Polish Jews and also interestingly enough in that scene at the railroad the revolt of Jews. Uh -huh. The rebellion. The rebellion, right. As they Marsha was especially taken with the fact that my family lost people in the Holocaust and for me it has a very special meaning. My sister went to Amsterdam last month and saw our name on the wall of all of the people that died and then she called me and asked me is there something I need to know about our family history? And so when I told Marsha that, Marsha said, now I'm really glad you're running this, and everyone needs to see it because this film is not available on DVD for people to see. I was proud to be in it, and I felt it was a powerful film, and Alex Knox, just before he played Woodrow Wilson, our great president, so brilliantly was playing this terrible Nazi, but Alex Knox was a fine actor, and it was a joy to work with him. It was kind of a privilege, I think, to be a part of that one. I did enjoy it.